Today I'm going over a small project, which is to make Gridfinity bins using Full Control. If you don't know what Full Control is, it's an open source Python library used to write G code. If you don't know what Gridfinity is, it's an open source storage system meant to help makers organize their tools and hardware. I want to print a lot of standard bins for my hardware collection, but because I don't want to go bankrupt, I want to try and be smart about how I print my bins. There already exist light versions of bins, which have the base cut out to increase the volume inside the bin and reduce filament requirements. There are also vase mode bins, which are flimsy, but print quickly and use the least amount of filament possible. The vase mode bins I designed in OpenSCAD struggled to slice properly on all slicers, but I still want to take those modeling tricks and make them easier to use by skipping the modeling and slicing step altogether, which is where full control comes in. The overall goals here are to one, Use as little filament as possible without compromising on useful features like the scoop and the label shelf, and also without making the bins too flimsy. Second, make the models print as fast as possible, which I plan to do by reducing the travel moves and by using G2 and G3 commands. I'm not certain about arcs being faster, but that's what I want to try and hopefully find out. And finally, I want to maximize the internal volume of the bin so I can store more items. After many attempts at full bins, this is what I came up with. It's some Python code using a modified full control library that has support for G2 and G3 commands, which are used instead of the built-in arc function. It can do any unit length, any height, but only one unit wide. I decided one wide bins were enough, and if I needed a larger bin, I would just make the bin taller instead of wider, or just use a modeled and sliced bin. The label shelf is completely bridged. There is no support structure underneath, which increases the storage volume of the bin. However, this bridging still takes a while, so the bins end up printing in about the same amount of time as traditionally sliced bin. The other key feature, the scoop, is still there, and is done by pinching out the wall on alternating sides on each layer, which doesn't reduce the outside wall thickness, but maintains the single path traced by the print head. This is one of the tricks I used in my OpenSCAD base mode bin. One major downside of this G-code is the clearly visible seam, which is on the back of the bin. I think it's fine though, since you don't usually see it, and hiding the seam on these bins is pretty impossible anyways. However, the artifacts you sometimes see from the label shelf and the scoop on the sides of the bin are non-existent. For the metrics that matter, here we have the weight, internal volume, and print time for a one by one bin. The light bins weigh less, which I think can be attributed to the scoop and to the five layer thick shelf, but the difference is not too much, while gaining 5% more storage. Overall, the full control and light bins are very similar, providing a slim improvement in volume and a better scoop, but at the cost of slightly more plastic. Regardless, they are better than the default ones, as long as you don't need the magnets. If you want to make these bins yourself, all you have to do is go to this Google Collab, which is in the video description. And this section is gonna act as a brief tutorial. So first you need to run this block, which will install the modified full control library from the repository. And while that'll take a second, so that while that's loading, come down and see the, the print options. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, span is what I call how like long the bin is. And there's no width option as you can. And the length, this is the, the 42, is the base unit. So it's probably not going to work if you do it with anything other than 42. I haven't tried. Um, and then the height is from the very bottom of the bin, like the the your, 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 your tabletop to the top of the label shelf. Um, and it's important, based on your printer, to set these coordinates. This is wherever the center of the bin will be printed. So since I have a Prusa Mini, it will, the, the 90, centime 90 centimeters is the um, center of the build plate. Um, and there's, if you have a different printer, you can also change the, change this to one of the defaults from the full control library, uh, which you can look up in their documentation to see what printers are. So now that that's done, when we run this, this will generate the steps, which is really quick. And then this block right here will uh, take all those options and transform it into so run this, it's done. 
And then the G code will be visible right here on the side where you can um, download the file and you know, preview in your, in your slicer of choice. And then if you want to see um, what that G code looks like, you can run any of these three blocks here, which will take the steps that we generated up here and make a plot. But this takes a second to uh, render. And here we go. Here is a the full control pre uh, plotly preview of the bin. As a disclaimer, it's not going to be easy to work with or modify this code, and most of it is just what works on my printer. It's never been tried in anything that is not a Crusa Mini. Trying to replace a slicer is hard, and the G-code may just not work properly on your printer. So please be cautious if you try to use it. I was not able to get any real time savings on this, despite having minimal retractions and mostly printing it in a single line. I think it's because I printed all of my bins out of PETG for their temperature resistance, and it just that material just doesn't like to print fast. I would love to see someone who is more passionate about speed printing to try to print a Gridfinity bin as fast as possible using this code. That would make me really happy. Thanks for watching. If I make a part two, it'll be about how am I going to store all these bins?